Welcome. We are moving on with the Kaiser Willys Swamp Engine Series. If you watched my last video on how to install piston rings, now that's going to lead to this where we're going to install the piston in the engine. A lot of what we're doing on this build is, um, you know, different procedures, same thing four times over. So I'm just going to show you one as we install this piston into the block. A few really important things to take note of as, you know, I talked about uh, the oil squirter in relation to the T-slot in the last video. So if you missed that, there's a oil feed hole on the bottom of the rod. So this uh, gets oil from the crank. So there's a little hole right there. The pressure from that squirts the oil out of the little hole here. If you notice, there's castings on both sides. So you have to really look close. And I always recommend, uh, you know, some parts cleaner and then air to make sure that hole's clean. Um, so don't just assume because there's a bump that you have the right side. There's a bump on both sides, but only one of them has a hole in it. And that hole needs to be opposite of the T-slot on this piston. And it also helps us know which way to install the piston in the engine. So now that uh, our rings are in and we're about to put it in the engine, um, it's important to install the bearing. So. Uh, take your bearing. When you open your rod bearings, they're all going to be the same. So you notice it has two holes in it, so that means it works for the top or the bottom and every different rod um, that's in your engine. So that really takes some of the guesswork out of it. To install the rod bearing, it's pretty simple. It's really important that this area is clean and free of burrs. You will notice there's a little kind of slot on one side and there's a little dimple in the bearing. So you just set the bearing, line it up in the center of the cap with the, the two slots lined up, and then you just take your fingers and rock it down in there, just like that. And you'll see, um, since there are two holes, you can look right through it, hold it up to the light, and you'll see no matter which way or which bearing you use, um, so what I'm saying is there's not a top and a bottom or left and a right. As long as you line up that little tab, one of these holes will line up with your oil squirter. So that's the rod side. You want to be really careful not to nick or drop these. Then your cap is the same way. Make sure it's nice and clean. So I start it like this. I don't know if it'll focus on that. So you see this is sticking up above, but the corresponding little slot is right there and then you just roll it down in just like that it's okay if it's not perfectly flush here sometimes you get it to about there and by hand it's hard to get it um, tight don't hit this with anything to push it in there when you clamp this down with the rod it will line up so even if you hit this with brass or something soft you could put a little nick in there and you don't want to do that so just get it as close as you can by hand and then you'll be good to go. A lot of people wonder about well, which way does the cap go? You know, should I mark it and put it all lay, you know, lay it all out? You really don't have to because if you notice the bolts are not centered on the the rod. So this is the way it goes. If I put it on like this, you'll see they don't line up. And this this will go on, but it'll be offset and it won't fit in the crank journal. So you really can't mess that up. Now when you disassemble it, I would try to keep you definitely want the cap that matches the rod. This is nice um, in that they are marked one and one, so that really helps simplify things. I have seen rods that are only marked on the rod and not the cap, so then you want to be really careful and keep them all together. So this rod is ready to go into the block. Let's talk about ring and gap alignment. So the main thing is that you don't want all the gaps in your rings to end up in the same spot. So if you put them in like this, yeah, when we compress it, these gaps are going to get much, much smaller. I think the tolerance is uh, between 7 and 45 thousandths is what this ring end gap is when it's in the bore. But you still don't want them lined up. So starting at the top, and this is personal preference because there's a lot of information out there and everybody does it differently. Um, I just make my compression rings 180 degrees off and I line them up with the pin, not this, this side skirt or T-slot. Um, it's just a good reference and helps uh, give you a, 
a clear picture on where they are because the rest of the piston all just kind of looks the same. And then same way with the uh, oil rings. There's three different rings there. So you see a ring end gap there. And I usually just offset these a little bit off of 90 or 180 so that they're not right in line with the compression ring. And that probably doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's just up to you. And then the there's a gap in this one. So there's three oil three pieces to the oil scraper ring. So just offset all of them so that none of them are lined up. Our piston is ready. Now let's prep our block. So I like to use a little bit of assembly lube whoops, to make uh, you know a good coating on that. I also I'm going to drip it right down here onto the top of the rod or the crank journal. I'm going to take a bar on the engine and rotate it so that the throw is all the way down. If it's all the way up, you'll only be able to tap your piston in, you know, basically flush with the top. And I want to be able to tap it all the way down in and seat it onto the crank. I also put um, some just regular lighter engine oil that helps f move around and flow. So I'm putting a nice coating of just some clean 1030. And then I also like to just kind of make it rain right on the rings and the piston. You just don't really want any metal on metal. Some people will dunk this whole thing, you know, in a like a coffee can full of oil. That's totally fine. You can't really have this can's about empty, but you can't really have too much oil on your rings and pistons. Yeah, it'll smoke a little bit when you start it up, but really, that's good. Be careful when you're doing this that you don't mess up all the ring end gaps that you just worked on and now this piston is ready to go in. You also definitely do want some assembly lube or clean engine oil on the rod side of the bearing as well. I almost made a silly mistake. I'm here telling you guys you know how to identify the rod and I'm sure about 38 of you already noticed I was I was lubing up cylinder 2 and cylinder 2 rod or crank journal with uh, and then I just showed you number the number one cylinder so take your time always double check yourself I am not perfect <laughs> as many of you have pointed out uh, in the videos but just work slow check yourself so this it doesn't matter what order we put them in but this is the number one rod and so I've turned the crank and the crank is at the very bottom of the throw. I'm going to set the piston in here and now here's an important part to remember. So my oil squirter is right here. So how this should go in is the oil squirter points away from the camshaft. So here's the camshaft. The oil squirter is pointing this way. So when you do that everything else works out if you did um, install the piston correctly. So Oil squirter away from the camshaft, T-slot towards the camshaft, and these pistons from Kaiser Willys have a little nick mark machined or cast into there that's forward. So when you have all four of them in here, those little tick marks are forward, oil squirter away from the crankshaft or camshaft, and T-slot towards the camshaft. So, and we verify this is number one, and let me just double check all my ring end gaps, make sure they're not lined up like we just talked about. And compression rings are the most important. And then um, carefully just slide this down in there, try and do not scratch the cylinder walls. And just set it right on there, and then we'll move on to ring compression. Get yourself one of these bad boys. Comes with a little wrench. Guess where you can get this? Imagine that. Kaiser Willys. And it's affordable. It works from pistons, I think from like an inch and three quarter up to three and an eighth. Like pretty much everything, even down to like motorcycles and stuff. You won't use it that often, but when you do, it's going to save the day. So, um, expand this out so that it's plenty big to fit over your ring. And be careful it doesn't just go kaboing. Okay, then you just uh, slide it right down over there and just start cranking it tight. 
Um, sometimes you have to pick up on the piston a little bit to catch that bottom ring, but the, uh, the oil rings generally compress very easy. They're not super tight. Then just take something wood or rubber that's not going to mar the top of your piston. Make sure you can really look at the, the little dash mark that says forward and the writing on the piston because you want it lined up and uh, just start tapping it right down in. Once you get it in, this will pop off and you're done. It's just that easy. Next up, I just come down here and reach inside. You don't want the threads of the rod bolts to dig into the camshaft. So I'm just tapping it lightly. My other hand is down here on the rod bolts. I can feel the crank journal gently guiding it. The new rings can be a little bit tight. Then I just kind of look in here and I can see that the rod bolts aren't hitting the crank or the crank and we're down nice and tight on the crankshaft. Make sure that the cap side has some lubricant. Um, you also, there's a thrust surface that that is a good idea to have some oil on too because that's kind of rides on the side of the crank. Then remember what I said that there's only one way this can go on. So if you have that in the wrong way, it won't slide up into the groove. So it, you'll know very quickly if you have it in there wrong. Then just start the nuts. I like to use wood or rubber and tap it up in there and you'll be able to see um, the little gap close up. And yes, I'm using an impact gun, but I'm just, it's just to save time. I'm not ugga dugga in it. Uh, okay, now we're switching to a torque wrench. There's really no sequence because there's only two, but I kind of hit it on both sides equally so that the cap goes up equally. If you see a much greater gap on one side or the other, stop and make sure there's not something keeping it from turning. And I set these so I'm even though it's not clicking, I'm just continuing to do it evenly on both sides. There we got a click and a click over there. I set these to 35 foot pounds. If you're using like a CJ2A style, each rod, uh, each rod bolt will have a little lock tab like this. And make sure that these get reinstalled. They are just to keep things from vibrating loose and falling apart. Um, do not put an impact on these, just a hand wrench or a socket because they really don't need to be that tight. They go on uh, kind of hard the whole way and that's the whole point is that they are not so prone to vibration. So you just kind of snug them up against the nut. Don't over tighten them because they're just sheet metal. So I don't know the torque value on them, but just uh, use your head, do it by hand. Each time I put another piston in the engine, I turn it over by hand. It really shouldn't get harder, you know, very little uh, as you add each piston because it's just the friction of the ring. There's no compression, there's no head. But if suddenly you torque up a rod, and it gets like super tight, you're gonna to wanna to stop and check, okay? And there's oil in here, so I'm not, I'm not doing any damage. I'm just lightly checking to make sure everything's spinning free. So that's it, just do the same procedure. All four are exactly the same, keeping in mind the oil squirter, the T-slot location, and keeping your numbers all lined uh, with the cylinder and the uh, caps matched with each rod and you'll be fine. So uh, 35 foot-pounds on the rod bolts. The Willys manual um, has all that information. There are two different sized um, rod bolts, so you'll notice some nuts need a 9 16 others like these use a 5 8 So check your uh, book 
before you do it because there are different torque values based on the size of your rod bolts. All these parts are available from Kaiser Willys. The link will be in the description. And uh, next step, uh, hopefully this thing will be running soon, so keep following along. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.